All right, we're excited to get this party started. Get this party going. All right, so if you get healed, we want your testimony. If you've been yes. healed, we need your testimony. It's not that we actually just want it, we need it. The, your testimony builds faith for other people to live in your reality. Mm -hmm. We want them to believe that if God can do it for you, that he'll do it for them. That's and the right. best way that happens is if you share your testimony, you give the goods out and you, you help preach the gospel. And that's the, what, the way you preach the gospel is you testify. The, yes. the things that have happened to you, the things that you've, you've seen, the things that you've heard, testify of those things. And it builds faith in those that are around that are watching and paying attention. So make sure you share your testimony. Make sure you share with us exactly what happened. We have opportunities and ways to do that. You can, we have, we have uh, testimonial cards and testimonial forms yeah. that you can fill out that will help. We have, uh, you can contact our office and let us know what has yes. happened or go to, a, you know, post something here on the Facebook feed. But let people know we need right now in the earth a lot of testimonies. Yes. As, as, oh. as the news, the news of the kingdom of God is the testimony. Yes. The news of the world is the tragedy and the crisis and the challenges and the problems. And we need more testimonies to overwhelm the bad news. Bad news spreads faster than good news. Did you know that? Yes. Did you know good, good news doesn't spread quite as fast? Bad news spreads faster. People love to talk about bad news. So we have to purposely and intentionally market good news because a person will say 11 things of negative and they'll say one positive thing. And that one, the 11 negative will actually cancel out the positive. And it's the vice versa. If you say one negative thing, it takes 11 positive things to cancel out the one negative. That's so we intense. have to really, really work hard to make sure that the kingdom of God is full of power and people have expectation that God is going to move in this hour. And it's because we are telling what God's up to. Yes. God is up to some stuff and we need testimonies. Yes. So we know people are getting healed. We know people are getting set free. We know people are getting delivered. And we know a lot of people are shy, are shy to share their information. But if you knew 10 other people, 11 other people could get a breakthrough. That's right. Because you shared your testimony, because you yes. took the time to write it out and share it and gave it. Mm -hmm. And it became what we call in the, in, the, in the social media world, the marketing and coaching world, social proof. Jesus needs social proof. Yes. In the New Testament, the reason he did miracles was social proof. The reason Jesus, God did miracles in the Old Testament was social proof. The reason God wants to do miracles now, it proves that he is socially involved with you. Yeah. He's not some God out there like, you know, um, what's, what's, what's the other, the two, the two philosophers that you were saying? Oh. Anyway, I forget his name. Yes. He, he, that, anyway, that, that said that God so Socrates far away. and Plato. They were so far, so far away that he's like the sun. You have to know that that's not how God wants to be. God wants to be so close that he actually burns you, gives you a tan. Right? He wants to be from so the inside close, out. From the cooking. inside out, he wants to cook yourself, right? And so you have to know that your testimony matters. And when you're yes. faithful with a testimony, when you're faithful with a testimony, it's important that you, that you know God goes, man, look at how faithful they are with their testimony. They are yes. actually broadcasting this. I'm going to tell it. There's only a few times that Jesus said, don't tell anyone. Well, he was very specific in not telling anyone, but guess what they all did? They, told they all told someone. It was because of a timing and, issue. And it was a timing issue, but I almost wonder, sometimes I read him like, Lord, you are such a you good marketer. Knew, you, knew. you are such a good strategist. You knew the moment you say, don't do eat this cookie out of the cookie jar. You'll come in a couple hours and you'll see someone's hands has been in the cookie jar, little bites, little nibbles. Now that's little... kind of like gonna tweak your brain about <laughs> what happened in the garden. Did God intend for that to happen? Wow. Let us make man in our image and our likeness, <laughs> knowing good and evil. <laughs> that's wild, isn't it, this person? Now, we have to understand something about our body. Our body is not just our body that we need. I hear people say sometimes, well, we only have a body because we still have to walk around this earth. But God always pours into something. 
He doesn't just let his glory and power float around in the air somewhere, right. but he pours it into a vessel. Let's all say that into a vessel. Into a vessel. And the vessel that God use, uses and chose to use in the New Testament after the baptism of the Holy Spirit is our physical bodies. Now that changes the use of our hands, our mouth, our eyes, our ears, our feet. It, it changes everything. Paul proved that, right? He put handkerchiefs on his body. Yep. He put cloths on his body because his body actually was the temple of the Holy Spirit and the glory, the power, the creative force that created the whole earth resided in him. That same power of resurrection that raised Jesus and Lazarus from the grave that caused all these dead people on that mountain to come out of the grave when when jesus died come on he, he loosed them and they started walking around the city of jerusalem can you imagine talk about a movie like that's a, that's a real what do you call it not the living dead these people were dead they came somehow out of their grave i don't know if they had to dig themselves out or if an angel yanked them out for there were numerous dead people who had come back to life as a testimony that Jesus, the one who was hung on the, on the cross, wasn't just an ordinary man. No, okay. he was the resurrection and the life. And he is the resurrection and the life. Now, Jesus says, I'm going to abide with you forever. This is the hope of glory. This is the secret that Paul talks about, the secret that was hidden for ages. It is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is Christ living in your physical body. Your physical body is has this treasure inside of it. The Bible says we have this treasure in an earthen vessel. There's in itself nothing special about this earthen vessel except what's inside of it. You know, we, we were just with a family member. They have the ashes of their loved ones yeah. in a vessel. Well, nobody's gonna grab that vessel and just use it for yeah. tissues or for flowers. No, that is a special ve a vessel. Why? Because of what's inside of it. It's like that with anything, you know, you can have uh, a little case and, you know, it could have toys in it. That's not that important. But if you have all your savings in there, now there's treasure in it. So right. now that Pretty box good. becomes very, very important. Now you, your body is very, very important because you are as a child of God only the, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, I just want to talk about this first in the uh, Old Testament, Exodus chapter 40. This is amazing because uh, Moses is instructed by God himself what the temple in heaven looks like and how he should build it here on earth a replica a form of it and there have been different temples by the instruction of the lord uh how to build it how to operate it in the earth and that all happens in the old testament and what is amazing is that moses first had to border off a piece of ground and he boarded that off with specific materials so from now on that bordered off property in the desert even though that sand that those rocks that piece of land was completely common and normal before now that moses by the instruction of the lord was told you're going to put the temple there that now became holy ground so nobody besides the levites and those that were to offer their sacrifices were to to go in there at all yeah. and it ramped up so it ramped up in holiness the deeper you went in so he he had the tent made tent of tabernacles you know the most holy place is there the glory of the lord resided that but not until it was bordered off with very specific materials and i can't get into that you know really well about all those materials gopher wood and all the different things that they've used in the old testament uh, different materials, gold, pure things. And then the glory of the Lord would come and all the priests fell backwards because of the great glory and the power of God. So what the, the only point I want us to get out of that whole Exodus chapter 40, and if you want to get the details, go read it for yourself. 
but that is that whatever you separate to God becomes God's. It belongs to him. Amen. God apostrophe S. It's now no longer anyone else's. It is only for the Lord. And what God then does, he responds by pouring his presence into that. He pours his power into it. He pours his fire into it. He pours uh, all of that he is into it. It's the most amazing thing. And when they would go into it and inquire of the Lord, they would receive wisdom. They would receive instruction to the point where Moses lived for 40 years in very bad conditions. He's no longer living in the luxury of Egypt, right? He went there, he left there at 40 years old. Then he goes and he lives with another tribe and they were tending to all the sheep and they had all the yummy goat's milk and the goat cheese and all the wonderful shade. Now all of a sudden he's in the wilderness. Nobody's living there for a reason right it's like for a reason who lives in the desert no because it's very hard on your body it's very dry normally you would think he would be like shriveling up in a few years from all that sun with no relief except little tents you know a little bit of cotton here and there so now now we see though he spends time with the lord in the in this tabernacle close to the presence of the Lord, the glory of the Lord would come into the tabernacle. And Moses from 80 years old to 120 was 100% preserved. He said, my whole body, everything about me is as if I'm 40, even though I'm 80. Wow. And it stayed that way for another 40 years until he went to be with the Lord at 120. He looked at like 40 until the day he died at 120. Okay, that was from the presence of the Lord. Now, fast forward, and we have this reality um, that is told us in 1 Corinthians by Paul, chapter 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15. And let's just read a few of these scriptures. It's so, so wonderful. <laughs> Here I go again. Do you not know that your bodies are the members of Christ? So that means your arms, you know, your members are, are what extends from you. Yep. So you're, it's like your limbs, your, you know, every, every part of you is a member of Christ. It's like my hands, my arms, uh, my legs, my feet, everything that comes from me belongs to Christ, belongs to the Messiah. So it's no longer our own. And it says, shall I then take away the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? So this is a very specific uh, issue that he's addressing. Obviously, there's, there is uh, immorality and adultery happening here. Um, and so he is, is trying to remind the people, you forgot who you are. You're actually not just a human being. You're bodies are members of jesus christ himself you're an extension of him shall i then take away these members of christ and make them members of a prostitute may it never be or do you not know that the one who joins himself to a prostitute is one body with her so whatever you join yourself to you're one you are completely identified with that one you're no better than the prostitute. You are a prostitute at this point is what he's saying. You're becoming one. You and the prostitute are one person. Now, now my husband and I, we are one, but we are also one with Christ because we are joined to the Lord. We will not join ourselves to something vile that's in the world, that's unregenerated. May it never be. Um, for he says, the two shall become one flesh, but the one who joins himself to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee immorality. Every other sin that a man commits is outside the body, but the immoral man sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? We received him from God. God the Father said, Holy Spirit, go live in Tracy and Natalie 
Go live in Carolyn, go live in Neela, go live in all these people. Go live in John, Jane, and, and everybody else that belongs to me, that are my children. And you are not your own. Now, this is a really great uh, conclusion to draw. Remember, we always draw a conclusion because when we draw a conclusion that this body is actually not even my body, <laughs> it belongs to the Holy Spirit. This is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now we think differently about our rights for healing and health. Now we're thinking differently about the use of this body. Now this body becomes an extension of God himself, of the same spirit that raised Jesus from the grave, the same spirit that created the whole world and the universe, all the stars and all the planets. You are not your own for you have been bought with a price. That's the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. Why? Because we declare to the devil and anything that even wants to try to touch us that we don't belong to ourselves. We belong to the Lord. That's what that means. We're hands off. You touch us, you're touching Jesus. You touch us, you're touching the Holy Spirit. You touch us, uh-oh, you just touched Almighty God. And now let's see what happens to you. We've even seen this you know, in ministry, when uh, people have decided to make themselves an enemy of ours, try to destroy our church, lie about us, try to destroy our reputation, it has always ended very badly, very badly, either in the hospital or even dead. And we've talked to many ministers, minister friends of ours, they've all encountered the same uh, issue. So we have to be very, very careful how we not only treat our own bodies, if they belong to the Lord, but how we treat other people because they do not belong to themselves. They belong to the Lord. Amen. So that is in first Corinthians six fifteen. I want to encourage you to study that this week with Exodus chapter 40 and understand that when you slap anointing oil on yourself, you're telling everything <laughs> in heaven and, and on earth and under the earth, whose you are. And, and then you can have authority that, that you say, this is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I always like to say in the morning, this is only the temple of the Holy Spirit. This body is only uh, allowed to be touched by, by God's virtue, not by anything destructive. And so there is a, that's, a, that's called waiting upon the Lord and he renews your strength, just like he did with Moses, where you meditate on the fact who lives in you and what purpose your body has. Isn't that wonderful? So your hands are healing hands. Come on, Jesus spit and our spit is healing spit. We believe that when we're on an airplane, our breath is healing everybody on the airplane. If there's viruses, they die, amen. Yes. So I declare that as the temple of the Holy Spirit, you are separated for the glory, the power, the presence and the healing virtue of the Holy Spirit through and through you know when when we were we had just met each other i went to a bible study you did uh at somebody's house and you you uh prophesied over me and it was about the anointing of Catherine kuhlman which wasn't a surprise to me because that had been prophesied over me since i was about 15 16 years old by numerous people and, uh, and you, you saw these demons kind of going around me in a circle saying, will she do it? Will she actually give herself to this? And it's, it's an amazing thing, but there was a hesitation in me always about Catherine Kuhlman because she ended up dying from, of course, a broken heart through a lot of betrayal, but she had a heart condition and people said that, that they used to be able to see her heart just beating out of her chest. They could see it moving. She had some kind of heart condition. And um, and I talked to the Lord about it. I said, Lord, you know, she had such amazing miracles. Really, no other woman that I know had that many astonishing miracles in modern day. Um, but then she died too early uh, from heart, heart failure. And the Lord said, for you, I want this to be through and through. And he it was so clear. He said it in one of our church services. For you, I wanted to be through and through. And he, he gave me the instruction to study that, to have his power go through me and then through me, right? In and out. And so I want you to take that for yourself. That's the will of God, that we are healed by the stripes of Jesus and therefore we heal the sick in the name of Jesus. Yeah, that's very powerful. Amen. 
you know, I like the idea that it goes through and through that God wants you to possess it. Yes. What, what, what I find in, in healing or prophecy or gifts is a person gets, they get a specific revelation and they hold to the faith in that revelation and, and don't broaden it. Don't go yeah, past no it because there's revelation for me. There's revelation for you. So when I want to receive healing, it's different than when I want to give healing. It's a different revelation. Yeah. So the Lord may teach you first the gift of healing where you're releasing healing for others. Yeah. And then you have a struggle with receiving healing because mm -hmm. giving and receiving are completely different. Yes. It's different muscles. It's like a bicep tricep. So you have to learn to work oh, both of good. them. Yeah. And so when you learn to work both of them, that's, that's powerful. So bicep is, is pushing away. I mean, tricep is pushing away. Bicep is curling, pulling to you. So you have to have both of those things functioning. But when you, when you know how to release those two things, you should be able to release different things. So releasing generationally, yeah, or, you know, dealing with now, not just, oh, I, I got healed, but man, my, my children are still dealing with it or my mm -hmm. great children or all this. So that's important that you know how to, 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 re, to release, to, to receive yeah. and to send. I mean, there's so many aspects of distribution yeah. and that's what this is, is you have an anointing or you have a, a promise from God and you learn how to distribute. So I used to read, you know, I studied Catherine's life and, mm -hmm. and the realization is that there's a lot of people that just never learned how to receive yeah. uh, well, like, you know, and you can hear in the conversation is I was, um, I, I, I have nothing. I possess nothing. I am nothing. Yeah. Well, it's hard to that. it's hard to receive personally if you if you have that perspective. Undeserving. Yeah. Undeserving, and God's only just using me. Mm -hmm. That's very different than I have authority. Yeah. Now, authority is something that you have to possess, and these are all different conversations. But yeah, well, we'll but, go through that in but, the whole month. That's yeah, and saying. these are these are. But this is the problem that I find in the that we are uh, because the power of the body of Christ is that we're supposed to learn from each other. Yes. But when someone gets a, a toy, they say, look at me and my toy, my toy is so cool. Broom, 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 broom. Don't How do you use that toy? I, you just have to come and see me use it. Broom, 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 broom. Well, why don't you, why don't you show me so I can also go broom, broom. No, you just have to, you know, just, you know, come and see. So, so we don't actually teach each other our different toys and how to use yeah. them. And so the body Christ is deficient in fame in, in trying to become a famous rock star yeah. ministry. And I believe that everybody wants, I believe God wants everyone to be famous. I don't believe that God is, I believe God's desire is for fame, but yes. it doesn't mean um the same thing yeah. it, it doesn't mean this it doesn't mean i'm exclusive it means that yeah. people should want to know what why i have and how i have and how they can have as well yeah and what's the benefit of having that and not just wanting to to meet me in every city for the sake of me moving my car around as right. a toy distribution right but it's yeah. we're supposed to be we're, we're the goal is to be more like a distribution center yes. than you are at um I don't know of anything in business that just like takes in product and doesn't give out. Right. But it's only even in, the world doesn't really do that. <laughs> no, that's business. Only in swamp swamps. Yeah. Only swamps do that. Still standing right? water. So over. and you know there was when you try to drain a swamp and anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we're we're we need to all be more paternal and maternal, parental, to understand that we don't grow to the fullness as the body unless we share all yeah, we and i've learned a lot of things from grow, you growing you, together yeah that's the fun thing even you know uh sharing how you got your miracle because that opens up another possibility in a realm yeah you know so every testimony uh that is being had by you you should share it which you already said because it holds the keys of the kingdom the secrets of how it works so don't just be embarrassed like, oh, I was struggling with something. I want everybody to know that I've never had any physical issues. No, nobody believes that anyway. Everybody believes that somebody, everybody needs a breakthrough somewhere. Yes. And so uh, sharing it is very exciting. 
because then other people will share. And next thing you know, we're not ignorant of any devices of the devil. That's right. So the body is supposed to be fitly joined, fitly yeah. joined together. One of the things I have been praying for you, especially those that are Citadel Church members, if you're squeezing by and you're jumping into this Facebook feed and you're not a part of Citadel Church, welcome to our, uh, we're going to call you e-members tonight. We're going to call you e-members <laughs> of our church so, yes. that, so that you can understand and receive it like it's for you. Amen. Not just for the sake of this is Citadel Church, the whole, body. Or the, or the whole body, because we don't room room over here by ourselves. We're, we're trying to expose the kingdom of God. I, I tell you what, we're getting fit. We're getting fit for something very powerful, uh, something very dynamic. The level of darkness uh, determines the level of outpouring. Man, that hit me this Sunday, this wow. Sunday, and the, the level of darkness. Yes. And I know that everyone has placed the blood moons and the darkness and the, all the darkness that's talking about in Acts chapter two with blood moons and, and the, you know, the eclipse mm -hmm. and all of that. I understand that. But the fact is, it's talking about darkness. It's talking about a, yep. a, a level of darkness. At the Real level strong. of darkness, there is going to be a level of outpouring. And so if you're seeing darkness increase, you have to become a fit person. There is a new outpouring that's coming, and there's a lot of people that will not be fit for it. They, they, they just won't be fit for it. And then yeah. they'll go back. When you're, when you're not fit for it, for what's coming, you don't, it, it's like you don't miss a beat, yeah. really, when you're not fit for it, because you just simply go back to what's familiar. You don't actually miss a beat. You don't miss the fact that you've missed out on anything until you watch those that were with you and the trajectory that they go on and where you are, then you realize, oh, I missed something. I, I missed yeah. out on something. It may not be that they, you know, they have the largest and greatest ministry, but there's an, a relationship that you will see that they have with God. There's something that is going on. So just make sure uh, you don't really know that you're leaking as a wineskin in, unless unless someone helps you recognize it because it just leaks out. So anyway, yeah. that's not my, my talk. <laughs> but in this, I, in this, I'm preparing personally preparing for to make sure that I'm spiritually fit to make sure that I'm emotionally fit yeah uh, there's more that happens on your emotions when this move of move of healing happens the move of healing is that when God starts to move in healing in a room uh, it's emotional it is not just physical you'll watch someone get healed and all of a sudden you'll feel something working in you you'll feel jealous you'll feel excited you'll feel peace you'll feel doubt you'll feel shame you'll feel all these things because healing is a corporate blanket. It's not just an individual outpouring. It's not just something that's being put on someone else. You're going to feel it. Whenever you have audacity, audacity is associated to faith. And, if, and faith is the most dangerous thing that the darkness is, can ever encounter. Faith is dangerous. So when the enemy sees that you want to rise in faith, then he has a, a counter response. Now, we don't believe in backlash, but we do believe in warfare. We do believe that, I don't believe that the devil can, I'm going to do something good and all of a sudden he's going to backlash me and I'm going to be beat up and worn out. And now the next thing you know, I will never do anything good anymore because he, he showed me. We don't believe in that. But we do believe in tactical warfare. We do believe in the fact that when I am going to war, I should expect an enemy. I don't, ex I don't expect, I don't expect, <laughs> we should put on our armor. I don't expect him to have dominance, but I, I expect him to show up. Mm -hmm. I expect him to actually um want to rebut against the fact that i'm taking ground from him if someone doesn't fight that you you're taking over their ground you're squatting and you know they're squatting and you come to kick them out if they don't fight back and try to call their rights the freedom to squat in your life then the fact is is you know they really don't know their rights but this devil yeah. he's been given permission to squat in un unproductive areas he's been given uh, permission to uh, to be be able to advance in atrophy, uh, muscles that you don't use, places you don't use. I was yeah. I was I was given a prophetic word for a gentleman, a, a pastor, and the Lord said, you know, this is this is the promise. This is something that you need to understand if you're going to receive your healing. Then you need to God needs you to to work on atrophy you your muscles have atrophied your 
you, you, your faith muscle has atrophied. Your ability to believe God and the call into existence has atrophied. And one of the problem with atrophy is it that muscle that used to work and so freely move is now been uh, it's now basically been disintegrated or become like a a stone. It's it's now you know like like the person who had the they call it a withered hand, but it's yeah. like a stone hand. It's a stiff. Well, that that was I I wish that I could have heard that. I want to actually I want to actually hear someone in the modern day come out of atrophy that in you know when someone's bent over so cracked up and I want to hear that pop 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 bones and things snapping into mm -hmm. place and you know things sinew coming back to life and muscles coming back to life there were all the 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 life was drained out of it and, and it's yes. been turned into I want to hear that I, I and I was thinking this weekend in service I want to hear that God I want to hear it I've not heard that. I've seen people get healed, but man, I've seen people get healed. And when they get healed, they still have, you know, remnants. They still have remnants of their, their, their stage that they were, they were in. So if that person was laying on the side of their of bed, evidence. still, it's still signs that they were living like that. I want to have such rev, such revelation of God's healing and restorative power that when someone gets off the bed, it will look like they've never actually been on a bed. Where mm -hmm. when they when they come out of a wheelchair, it's they they don't even have a remnant. Now part of that's going to be the muscles that have been atrophied are going to have to have immediate supernatural nutrient. It's it's a, it's a, it's going to have to be a miracle. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, I'm appreciative when God has Creative. taken away the spirit of crippling spirit, whatever it is, and released to them the right. power to walk again, a life again. And then over the time they are unraveled. I totally appreciate it. I totally appreciate it. But I'm stepping, I'm believing that the level of darkness, mm -hmm. at the level of darkness, we have to have notable, I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm just rambling. Well, I'm just, but I'm just, I'm yeah. just, hopefully this makes sense. But yeah. we have to have notable evidence that Christ is a living Christ. Yes. And that we're not just have some kind of, um santa claus belief in god because most christian most people in the world believe that they believe that how that's why the the church can be shut down and the things that the government is trying to do and the kingdom of this world is trying to do in shutting down this church part of it is people say oh they're so antichrist well part of it is they don't know that they're antichrist they just don't believe that you know how to keep us safe and so in that they have to keep us safe there's no faith for us the church to have power to keep the world safe because they haven't seen it and it may not be that they're even antichrist it may not even be that they're this de demonically inspired it yeah. may be just the fact that they have never seen us save anybody other than feeding the poor and and clothing the naked and helping people in prison and doing all the same humanitarian work that every other organization says that they do mm -hmm. and so but they've never seen the the supernatural response yeah of God that shows that Christ Jesus didn't just die and is now Santa Claus. And I'm glad you believe in this fairy tale. Nice Hopefully it gives you a you. nice crutch in this season. Cause that's all we have when, oh, well, he makes me feel good. And I was, I was, you know, you can go, I feel more hopeful, I feel more, hopeful more joyful. I was depressed and now I'm not. Well, we know that's true. People feel that at Christmas. Actually. But people feel that at Christmas, they feel hyped up in a game. They feel, I mean, you can feel all of that. And you can actually go to some really, some, some help groups that will help you out of these things that the church says that we're very powerful about and helping people. But it doesn't show a supernatural intervention of God. Yeah. It doesn't show that God is intervening in the actual natural flow of things. That's what I want. I want a God that shows himself so powerful. And so one of the meditations that I'm, I've been meditating on, and I will tell this part of the story that I had prepared is, is that there was a man for 38 years who laid at a pool, laid at a pool in the religious system. The system said, okay, there's some help here. When that, when that water starts stirring, mm -hmm. you make sure you're the first one that gets in there because that water only stirs. It's a steady, it's a, it's a still pool. And once it starts bubbling and stirring, once that thing starts moving, it looks like a jacuzzi, then you need to make sure you're the first one in there because that means the angel of the Lord has come to release healing into that water. And that water now becomes a healing element. 
think about this. This is the way that God had to use some natural circumstance and bring in supernatural into it. And he had to stir it. And this is the way God intervened. This is this, this is his natural intervention yeah. in the day. I mean, cause there was no other way. I mean, it was like, okay, so there was no, you know, there was exorcists that were, that were dispelling, you know, demonic spirits as priests, but there were no, no one walking around with healing. They were in the Talmud teaching herbal medicines and elixirs and, you know, the, 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 ver the first uh, essential oil distributed distrib distributors were priests. <laughs> they was the, mm -hmm. they were the, the balm of Gilead. Yeah, so yes, so this was this stuff. was all in the natural. Mm -hmm. There was no supernatural intervention. There was nobody showing up with power. There was one place you can go to and let in, in the in the Solomon's porch, I believe it was, yeah. and let that thing stir up. Yeah. And once it stir up, once it gets stirred, then jump in. But man, we don't one know. Person. I think it's once a year. I'm not sure how often it's gonna hit, but you just need to be here. 38 years. The place has thousands and thousands and thousands of people gathering there because that's their only hope. Yeah. That's their only hope. I believe that we're heading to that season where the only hope is going to be people to gather around some pool that of, of hopefully God's going to show up there. Hopefully. I mean, that's, I love the hope, but I want actually, I want yeah. God showing up with notable. Then Jesus comes walking in and he sees this guy's been laying there for a long time. And, and, and he says, hey, man, why are you still here? You've been here for a long time, 38 years. Yeah, I know. You've been for, why, don't, why don't you go home? Take up your bed and walk. He goes, well, I, you know, I'm waiting for someone to come. And you know, the angel is going to come and stir it. And if I'm the first one in there, but I have no one to help me. Now, that's a whole other Christian mindset that's going on. It's like no one's going to help you. Well, listen, when people help you, you don't even, some people don't even know how to receive the help. Because right. here's curiology. And I don't know how many people we have, but we've been doing this every week, every Tuesday, bam, like clockwork mm -hmm. right here. Well, what is that? That's help. Teaching what no one else is teaching, teaching how to receive your healing, teaching how to possess your healing, how to read the Bible for your healing, how to pray through. So we, there's help. But the fact is, is there's not enough supernatural intervention from God for people to believe that they can come and gather around that well. I love what Jesus does. Jesus comes up to that person. He says, well, get up, get up, take up your bed and go home. This guy, you know, it's, it's, he's waiting for the angel of the Lord. And the Lord told me years ago, he, he sent an angel to us, the angel of healing. But you know what I realized is when he sent the angel of healing, the angel, we didn't ever say, he didn't ever say, now the angel of healing is here in the room with you. Tell everybody to go stand where he's at. He didn't. All it did was activate my anointing, my wife's anointing, the people's anointing in the room it just created atmosphere the too. atmosphere it stirred the waters it stirred the room i've been this week activating the angel of healing in my home saying lord i know that there's the, you sent us the angel of healing we're not gathered tonight he has a night off let's have him just come and hang out in my house <laughs> it's just, i mean he, of course he because the captain of hosts right is there's more but the real is I'm like, let, let that, let the angel of healing come and hang out with us. Mm -hmm. We're not sick, but I'm, I'm, I'm doing this I'm, because I want another level. I want to soak in bass mm -hmm. in that next level of authority, because when he's with me, something happens to me, something happens to my gifting, something happens to my faith. And I don't completely understand all of how the resources of heaven work, but God's teaching me. He's teaching me that, 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 that is important. It's important that that angel didn't go away. And all of a sudden he's just sitting around going, man, I don't have anything, any waters to stir anymore. But now he has waters in our home and he has waters in your mm -hmm. life. And the, if you, if he can stir water, he can stir air. He can stir atmosphere. We he's not just water. a water mm -hmm. bender, air bender. He has the ability to move things. Mm -hmm. And so I want to encourage you to believe that in this season, God wants to bring you resources from heaven in such a way that yeah. you that it activates you. Now I love this. When Jesus showed up, it was no longer about waiting, but it was about doing. Yes. Act. Part of part of getting your healing this year, this month, is act like you're healed. Yes. He didn't. He said, "Get up and take your bed and walk." Nothing else. He didn't pray. He didn't lay hands. He didn't throw no. oil. He didn't have a ritual. He just told the guy that, of something that he can do. He gave him permission to act like he was already healed. Yeah. 
And that, I think that caused that angel of the Lord that was now used to coming down and being in the water, I think he was probably standing right there behind Jesus, standing there with Jesus. Now he's a ministering spirit sent forth on the behalf of those that are those to that inherit. to inherit the kingdom of God, yeah. all the things of the kingdom. Do you know healing is a part of the kingdom of God? Yeah. So that angel is sent forth to help you as a minister to receive, Amen. to receive, yeah. to bring to you your inheritance. Yeah. So if there's an angel of healing that we see in the Bible, if we see an angel of prosperity, if we see an angel of revelation, all these angels are here because they're ministering spirit sent forth to, to minister to us as those that will inherit. I mean, there was an angel of prayer and intercession that was there with Jesus was on the, on, on, you know, he was praying, Lord, take this cup from me. Yeah. And, you know, the angel came and ministered to Jesus. Yeah. So, man, my goodness, we have these things, but we, because we don't actually live in a supernatural world, we live in a very natural world. We think that all of those things are Bible stories, just like we read about, you know, cat in the hat. We think it's the same kind of thing. It's just a little rhyming story, a little story to kind of get us thinking about things. But no, no this is reality. Yes. And I wish I had more of a clarity in, in, in being able to just, just tell you what I wanted to tell you tonight, because I, I kind of feel a little scattered. But I want you to know there is not scattered in a negative way, but scattered yeah. in the fact that there's so a lot thoughts. of things to say, a lot of <laughs> thoughts. When the enemy tries to come in, raise up a standard against them. Yes. Don't, don't sit there and go, oh man, I just knew I shouldn't have gotten into this one. My throat, my neck, my whatever. It is. Just no, just no. take authority over. This is what you're yes. doing. This month you're exercising authority. The muscles. The, authority difference be muscles. the difference between the angel coming in into the water and you jumping in oh, and Jesus walking up is authority. The angel didn't do authority. He created atmosphere. That's what that's what the and that's what would happen with William Branham. That's mm -hmm. what would happen with Catherine Coleman, create an atmosphere, and then then it would activate a gift. But Jesus was the gift that activated the angels. Yeah. And so if you realize that you have authority, that authority is going to work with you this month. Don't let it become yeah. atmospheric. Don't let it become hope filling, hope fill, yeah. and wait until someone comes and helps you. Don't do that. Be a, be be someone that is that is on in the action path, right? Take yes. action yes. and say, from this moment, I'm healed. I'm yeah, acting healed, sure right. but I still have medicine to take. Well, you know, don't just act healed while you're taking your medicine. Yes. Call it placebo. Did yes. you, say, say I'm taking these sugar pills, Do whatever, but you've got to make sure you're stepping in the faith. Yes. Talk to the pill if you have to take a pill until your doctor releases you. Talk to the pill, say, okay, I want you to know you have only, I went, when's my next appointment? I have 30 days. Yeah, 30 days, you're going to be out of my life. 30 days, and then every day you have to take it. Every time you, 29 days. you have 29 days, Mr. Pill, you better, you better realize your day is done in this body, and you yes. will have no adverse effects in me. Amen. You are not going to cause any challenges yes. in me. You're not going to yes. mess with my liver, my kidneys. You're not going to mess with me. I'm only doing this because I need to have that release, whatever it is. You, you, yeah. you do Until that. Until the doctor releases. Until the doctor releases you, because you can get healed why are you taking medicine? You know, we've seen that so many times people that are still wearing glasses and they start getting headaches and then they realize when I take that glasses off, I have no more headaches. Wait a minute. Something changed in my eyes, right? Because before they had headaches and then they got glasses from the op, from the op, optim, optim, the optri optri <laughs> Uh, we don't even we know. don't even go so anyway optometrist optometrist i know is that right optometrist hopefully that's not something else you're like no that, that, that's that's, a, that's down the wrong <laughs> this is place. the funniest but anyway you go and get checked again and it'll prove you don't have to like hide from the doctors uh if it's a if it's healing and a miracle they'll be able to notice it. They'll see the difference. They'll do blood work again. Tell them how it's changed. And then, you know, we're going to give you a whole list of things that we're going to do together to claim this territory called our temples back to the power of the Holy Spirit. That's right. And uh, hands off to the enemy. We are anointed, separated to God's use. And there's going to be a lot of changes this month. It's going to be wonderful. We're going to tell you what to do. 
um, and we're going to possess the land. Amen. And maybe you're just going to be focused on one thing in your body that you want to see. That's great. You know, you don't need a list of 50 things. That's going to be complicated. But pick one thing, and then we're going to go after that. And then once that's removed, we're going to go after the next thing. But uh, it's an exciting life to live in the benefits of what Jesus bought for us. And know that when the anointing of healing happens, you're going to you get you'll get healed emotionally as well. So it's not just physical. It's, yes. it's spiritual. It's emotional. Yeah, healing is healing. Healing will transcend yeah. all of those areas. So just be prepared to be healthy and, wow. and, and to have a, a great summer, being able to do things, surf, yes. whatever you want to do that you couldn't do before. Family relationships yeah. can be healed. Amen. Finances. There can be a lot of healing going on because it's all covered yes. in the blood. We release the blessing of God on you. We declare that you're healed. Yes. For whatever it would ail you, whatever yes. in uh, affliction is coming against you, I release the power of the Holy yes. Spirit to you. And I thank you, Father, that, Lord, you have the fire and the power to reverse everything that the enemy yes. has strategized against him. And we declare you are healed. Yes. You, we say, be healed. Take up your bed and walk. Just yes. go ahead and start living the life that you've always determined that you would live. Live a destiny life. Don't live a life assigned to f dying. Live a life assigned to living. Yes, live, Lord. live, live, and go live. We release that power to you. Yes. We release that conviction Increase in reverse. every any place that's been atrophied in your breathe faith. Out. Lord, I ask that you would breathe on it again. Breathe yes. on it in them and let that place be alive in yes, their Lord. body, soul, and spirit. In Jesus' name. Yes, we pronounce you healed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let us know about the testimonies. Those of you that are going into the Zoom healing rooms now, make sure you let us know on the Facebook Zoom healing room page what how it happened. Uh, that really is going to encourage people. We, we give the um, testimony anonymous, so you don't have to worry about that uh, unless you specifically say, please, you can mention my name. We believe that the virtue went into you today and you just keep thanking the Lord for it and start looking for the change. All right, be blessed. Have a good night. And we will talk to you soon. As soon as I can turn this off. See you later. <laughs> Bye.